There will be a total solar eclipse all across America on April 8, 2024. If you have not seen one in person, let me tell you, it's an incredible experience and you should absolutely go if you can. If you're thinking, oh, maybe I've seen a solar eclipse, you have not seen a solar eclipse. If you miss this one, it will be 21 years before the next one hits America. So it's not exactly once in a lifetime, but it's rare. I'm making this video early so that if you want to go, you'll have enough time to figure out getting time off from work and reserve some campsites and hopefully get some eclipse glasses before they all run out. More on that later in the video. To experience the eclipse, you must be inside of this 100 mile wide path of totality. Even 99% totality is not good enough. The difference is quite literally like night and day. This is what totality looks like, where the sun is completely covered by the moon. This is what you want to see. But you don't want to be too close to the edge of this path because you'll get less than 60 seconds of totality. Everyone will tell you to get as close to the center of this path as possible because that's where totality lasts the longest, about four minutes. But I'm here to tell you that that is also a bad idea because of the incredible traffic jam that will occur right afterwards that you don't want to get stuck in. So my advice is to watch the eclipse, not from the center, not from the edge, but somewhere in between. One of these two bands, depending on which direction you need to travel afterwards. This means you'll get about three minutes of totality instead of four, which I think is a perfectly acceptable compromise. Also, have everything ready to throw in the car so that you can drive away and get on the road as soon as the eclipse is over. That's what I did for the 2017 eclipse. I left my massive campground early on the day of the eclipse and started driving back home. Then, for the eclipse, I just stopped in a small cul-de-sac on the side of the road and watched from there. Unfortunately, I did wait too long to leave after the eclipse, so I still got caught in the first, I don't know, 5% of the massive traffic jam afterwards, so it took an extra three to four hours to get out of there. Luc Lafreniere, my coworker at the time, was not so lucky. He went to the exact same airport that I did, but his friends didn't want to leave for the eclipse. Uh, and he says that in the first hour afterwards, only six cars got out. And the, the small public building that was there was completely jam-packed with people because it was the only place with air conditioning. It took him most of a day to move just a few miles. Don't let this happen to you. Alternatively, you can just plan to stay where you are for an extra day so you can bask in the afterglow. The traffic jam will mostly have cleared by then, probably. That's what I'm going to do this time. Either way, make sure you've got lots of water and gas and snacks in the car. My primary source of information is greatamericaneclipse.com, which you should visit, but there's also eclipse2024.org, nationaleclipse.com, and eclipsophile.com. The most important thing to do on the day of the eclipse is to avoid clouds that will cover the sun and ruin the view. Long story short, the further north you are, the worse the expected cloud coverage will be. So the best conditions will be in Mexico or Texas if you don't want to cross the border. I'm assuming you're American. No hablo espanol. I plan to watch the eclipse from Carbondale, Illinois as part of a four week road trip. But I'll be paying close attention to the cloud coverage predictions in the days leading up to the eclipse so that I can drive somewhere else if necessary. The best source of info for cloud predictions is probably atrospheric. They even have an eclipse map on their website. Like, they know why you're here. It's incredible that information this good is free. But if you want even more, there's also an app, Atrospheric Pro. For just three bucks a month, and you'll only need one month, it has the ensemble forecast feature, which combines multiple forecasts together. There are physical roadmaps that you can buy of just the eclipse path for like 20 bucks, but instead of that, I just have a Google Earth map that I added the eclipse path on top of. Link in the description if you want that. Uh, and we're just gonna use mobile data to access it, but I should probably still print some of that out just in case. If you already live in the path of totality, then great, you don't have to do anything. But you still might wanna have the car ready to go just in case there are clouds. 
The farther away you live from the path of totality, the more logistics you're gonna have to figure out to get yourself there. You should arrive inside the path of totality at least one day before the eclipse. This guy, Sean Nelson, arrived five days early and still got stuck in a long line to enter his campsite, which was just some farmer's field. But that doesn't seem typical. Uh, the line from my campsite, which just had one entrance, was not really that bad and I got there just one day in advance. There will be huge competition for any place a person can sleep, like hotels, motels, Airbnbs, and even campgrounds. This will only get worse the closer you get to the path of totality. So start planning your trip as soon as possible. In 2017, I reserved the two campsites that I would need months in advance. And yeah, you might wanna bring some camping equipment even if you don't plan on camping. Worst case scenario, you can sleep in your car, but it's really uncomfortable. You gotta get horizontal. The most spectacular location to see the eclipse from will be, no doubt, Niagara Falls. Here's a composite I made of what that might look like. But the chances of clouds at that location are very high, which is why I'm not risking it. And if it doesn't work out, it'll be the year 2144 before Niagara Falls sees another eclipse. We'll all be dead. And that's part of what makes an eclipse so magical. Knowing that you can only see a few of them before you die. Knowing that they'll continue on and on for hundreds of millions of years, and your life was just an infinitesimal fraction of that. When you're standing under the shadow of the moon, you feel incredibly small. And you feel connected to everyone else who's done the same in the past, present, and future. It's really incredible. Okay, let's talk eclipse glasses. First of all, you must never look directly at the sun during the partial phases of the eclipse unless you're wearing eclipse glasses. Sunglasses are not good enough. More specifically, you need ISO 12312-2 solar filters. Sometimes there's a little colon 2015 at the end of that as well. And this is important because in 2017, there were a lot of vendors selling inferior glasses, sometimes even with fake ISO ratings printed on there. So you gotta be careful. Use the link I provided below, get your glasses from one of those vendors and you'll be fine. Also, buy your glasses right now because the closer we get to the eclipse, the harder it will be to get glasses. Fun fact, uh, for the 2017 eclipse, I ordered my glasses months in advance, but it still took so long for them to get to me that they arrived after the eclipse was already over. Fortunately, there were some friendly campers who gave us some of theirs, so we were okay on that front. Just to be super clear, you only need eclipse glasses to view the partial phases of the solar eclipse. During the total eclipse, also known as totality, you do not need eclipse glasses at all. And in fact, you have to take them off in order to see the sun. Uh, well, to see the corona of the sun shielded by the moon, which is about as bright as a full moon. Also, solar filters must always be on the front of a camera or binoculars or a telescope, never the back, or you will fry your eyeballs or the sensor. If this is your first eclipse, don't even try to take a photo or video of it. It won't look any good and it'll just spoil your experience. Instead, just bask in the glory that is the eclipse. That's what I did in 2017 and it was fantastic. However, for this one, I am going to try to take a video of it. This video is the first of a new series I'm going to do about chasing the 2024 solar eclipse and all of the little adventures that my wife and I are going to have on our four week road trip there and back. I don't actually expect that the series will do very well on YouTube. I don't think it's gonna get a lot of views, but I don't care. And at the very least, it'll give me a lot of great footage to make video editing tutorials out of. And also it's going to be quite interesting to edit the videos while on the road. In the next episode, I will be figuring out what camper van to buy. Uh, I hope to see you there. Remember, new episodes come out on Nebula first. Bye.